Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. And so uh, what I do is I always tune in and ask myself, you know, well, what's going to be a very important topic or an important session? And uh, what was what was true for today was the topic of the overthinking identity, the overthinking identity. So let's get ourselves into a, a, a real um, a real beautiful end result. And let's let's talk about uh, how this identity is is very important but also how uh, it can get itself carried away. It's true, isn't it? I mean, it's a very important identity to be able to critically think and analyze certain things. Imagine if you didn't have the ability to, to critically think through things. And so it's very important. However, it's not important everywhere. And a lot of times it can stop us. So one of the best ways to learn something is to do it. You know, you simply can't analyze uh, how to play a good football game. We, you, you simply can't become good at it. You can sit there, analyze it, right? Be a spectator and then try, but you can't get good at it unless you play the game. And so the, the thing is, is when you play the game, you, you can't avoid failure because every time you get to a new level, you've got to fail. You know, I think, you know, there's, there's no one that wins it, everything all that you just can't, you've got to go to the next level. So you, Part of success is failure. So thinking is important. It's important to have a plan, but you must be a, a scientist. And uh, a scientist has to test their hypotheses. So you have to think and then go, well, I think it's this. And then you have to actually go for it. Because if you just keep thinking and you never take action, uh, you're actually not being an overthinker. You're just being, a, you're just being scared. You see, and so there's a difference. There's a very healthy um, level of thinking, and the thinking should go with action. Is it true? There should be just there should be the right amount. You know, it's kind of like Goldilocks, not too much, not too little. It should just be the right amount, right? We want to have the Goldilocks level of uh, overthinking, you know, and uh, that that's important. That's important. So I, I class myself as a recovered overthinker. So welcome to our first OTA meeting. This is Overthinking Anonymous. My name is Chris Duncan, and I have uh, I've been uh, in recovery for. <laughs> Welcome to OTA meeting number one. But over <laughs> overthinking can become a loop that can spiral out of control. That uh, really can can you know like a vampire steal the life of your end results, right? It really it really can steal can suck the life out of um what it is you really want to do because there's a lot of times the overthinking didn't do anything but create anxiety or worry true just contemplating all the different variations of what could go wrong right and it didn't actually none of them even happened you know it's kind of i think there's some there's some sort of saying where you know worry is is, is giving yourself you know having to experience the the negative twice you have to experience it before it happens then if it does happen you have to experience it again and so worry locks in that you definitely have to experience what you don't want at least once. And so overthinking uh, is, a, is a very uh, important two words, overthinking. Okay, it's not thinking. It's overthinking. And I'm over it, by the way. Are you over it? That's crazy. I'm overthinking. Anyway, there's a, there's a certain amount of it that's right. Okay. And, uh, and then you're over that. And the point is, is that we today the topic is about is getting over overthinking, over overthinking. My overthinkers are thinking, how does that even work? Well, let's underthink it for a little bit. It's about taking action, and it's about making sure you have a plan and then acting on it, and then getting feedback, and then using that skill, using that skill to then be able to go, okay, what's the next course of action? See, everything in life spirals. It's vibrational. And it never moves in a straight line, and neither do you. Yet, what we want to do is we want to move in a straight line. What I find is overthinkers have typically had a, uh, a very, very, very strong conditioning, okay, 
very strong conditioning that they must get things right. So where does that come from? Well, in my opinion, it comes from the schooling system. Schooling system says, uh, you're gonna learn this thing that happened a long time ago, and then you're going to get it wrong or right. And you gotta think and think and think and think and think and think and think. And if you think enough, you get it right. And if you don't think enough, you get it wrong, you're bad. Right, good, wrong, bad. See, see that? And so you didn't do enough thinking, you didn't research enough. And that's where the learning comes from. However, the, the schoolroom is, is probably one of the worst places to learn how to do life. You know, where in life is it binary? Where in life is it black and white, right or wrong? You know, where, where you know, other than in academia, it, you know, it's, it's not like that in the art world. There's no right and wrong in the art world. One person says, I like that. The next person says, I hate it, right? It's not like that in the sports world. In sports, you literally lose and then you have more than you win. You know, it's not about, you know, there's no right or wrong. You can play a bad game and win and a good game and lose, you see. So it's not, it's not like that in business, you know, in business, there's no right, wrong. You see, it's not like that. But yet we, we got conditioned to this at an early age. So we're searching for it, aren't we? And we, we decide that if I think enough, if I think enough, then I can just get it right and I can avoid the wrong and the wrong is bad. Yet the truth is, is that the wrong is connected to the right. It's the only way to experience hot is to get cold. You know, it's the only way. And so overthinking can really rob us of just being in life and life's an action sport. True. It really is. It's, it's, it's a stealer. It's a stealer of life because, you know, you look back at your life and you think to yourself, oh, well, I spent most of it just thinking about it instead of doing it. You know, uh, my life was in my head, not in the real world. And so here's what I want to say to all overthinkers. How many of you that are overthinkers just want to make sure you've got all the information? Yeah, like you just want to make sure you've got all the information. Give me a yes if it's true. You just want to make sure you got all the information. Great. Okay, well, the only way to get all the information is to play the game. Can't get all the information unless you're in the game. So anytime you're not in the game, you're not getting all the information. <laughs> so eat that. <laughs> so if you really want all the information, you can't stand on the sidelines just overthinking. Because you're not getting all the information because you don't actually know what it's like. If you're not in the game, you're not actually doing the over, you're not actually thinking correctly, you're not doing it the right way. If you're not actually in the field risking failure, you're actually not overthinking. It's a lie. Overthinking is your excuse. I want you, I want you to hear that. Overthinking is your excuse. If you're not in the game, you're not getting all the information. And an overthinker wants all the information. So if you're using information, it's just your excuse when you're really scared of failure. You're really scared of getting it wrong. See, we overthinkers have a big dopamine hit when they feel like they've worked something out. Sometimes we can feel like that's more enjoyable than actually doing it. We figure something out. It feels so good. You're smart, Chris. You figured it out. Yes, but I'm still here. I haven't done anything. And it's a lie because we don't figure it out unless we're in the game. The only way to figure it out is if you have the result. Oh, I figured out this coaching thing. How many clients have you had? Oh, none. You haven't, you haven't figured it out. No, I understand it. No, you don't understand it because you're not doing it. I figured out this money thing. I figured it out. I understand this. Uh, what well, have you? See, an overthinker believes that a business plan gets followed. I've got the perfect business. Guys, there's never been a business plan that ever gets executed like the plan because it's always changing. 
See, it's changing because as you start the plan, everything else has to, has to fall in line with market conditions. It could be the perfect plan, then COVID hits. Could be the perfect plan, see? Do you see what I'm saying? So even if you think you've thought it out right, you're not in the game, so you're not actually doing it right. Does this make sense, overthinkers? I really want the overthinking aspect of you to hear all of this because I want to just see you in there playing the game and then using this skill. Because what I found, when I was able to use my critical thinking and critical action, then I was so much more powerful, so much more powerful because I was able to get real world information and then use my skill, my skill of figuring it out, but re with real information and I was applying it straight away. So the feedback system was much faster. Does that make sense? I didn't have this feedback system of sit back, work it all out think that I figured all out, then go and test it and realize my first assumption right back at the beginning was actually incorrect and then have to redo it all. Guys, overthinking is one of the slowest feedback systems you could ever have if you're a person that wants results. It's a great system if you just want to never risk failure and never actually create what you want. It's a great way to pretend that you're doing something. It's great. Great. Yeah, I've just been working all out, writing my plan right? It's a great way. It's a great excuse. It feels like progress, doesn't it? But what's real progress? What's real progress? And there's an aspect of you, as I say this, that's agreeing with me, but then there's that other part of you as well that feels very challenged by hearing all this. And I want you to know that part of you is very young and it decided I'm going to work things out so I never have to fail. And when I work things out and I tell people how I've worked it out, I get a big shiny sticker and I worked it all out and I'm good. And then other times when I just went for it, and I got it wrong, bad. It felt bad, bad. That's not good. Make sense? And, and the truth is it is like the elephant that's still tied to the small tree. It was, it was, a, it was a thing. It's when you had to get through school, no doubt. And it's a very, 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 very useful skill. Critical thinking is a very useful skill. Fucking incredible skill. Great engineers, great critical thinkers. They can figure it all out. They understand it. They love it. Right? But, but if you're in a relationship with someone that has to try to understand everything all the time, how exhausting is that? Critical thinking isn't needed when you're being intimate. See, it, it's not about using it all the time, you see. It's about understanding that you get to use it when it's needed. And so today's session is going to be great. Today's session is going to be great. And we're going to be speaking to this identity and allowing it to allow other things to happen, allowing it to truly use its true power and, and to sometimes sit on the sideline, right? To sit on the sideline. See, experience is a great teacher right? Overthinking is a great way to learn. Critical thinking is a great way to learn, but so is experience, you know? And they're using it. They're also they're the most amazing one-two punch. Critical action, critical thinking. They're amazing. You take the action, you plan the action, you take it, you get feedback, you, you go for it, then you take, take the action again. You see? It's the best system on the planet. But if you just use just one of them, you're, you're literally, uh, you know, tied to that. You can't move forward. You must use both. Who agrees with this? Does the premise hold? They're both important. They're both great. And by the way, just crazy action without any critical thinking. That's, that's not smart either. You're a nut job. <laughs> you've got you've to be able to analyze what's happened and be able to create new plans. So they're just both needed. True. However, the, the challenge is in our society, one of the two has been rewarded more, we think. We actually look up to people the most in society who, who just go out there and take action and really just go for it. See, there's always a million reasons why something could go wrong. True. There's always thousands of reasons why you're not good enough. 
I want you to hear this. Successful people take action on a future even if there's no proof in the past that it will work. They still take action. They go for it even without proof. Where are my overthinkers? They go, what, what do you mean there's no proof? What? They just went for it? True people on the cutting edge of creation, they have to make it up. What? Well, you, how else do you define invention? How else do you define invention if it's not making it up? They make up the amazing business idea. They make up amazing marketing campaigns. They make up how to make new money, how to make a new uh, relationship. They make it up. So let me ask you a big question, overthinkers. How many times did you get told off for making it up? Don't make it up. You just made that up, didn't you? Same. I started to think that my imagination in magic in action, was, was there something wrong with imagination, creative spirit? Don't make it up. You're just making things up. Don't make it up. Do your research. You just made that up. Don't make it up. But then what's confusing is anyone we look up into society, they just make it up, don't they? That's called invention. You see? Isn't that a weird, confusing thing? In, in alchemy, the imagination is the philosopher's stone. Imagination is our true connection to superconscious. Imagination, intuition, where we truly get outside of ourselves and imagine in magic, in action. It's there. It's imagination is, is huge. And see, what happens is if we always have to overthink and analyze and work everything out, we're literally cutting ourselves off from the life force that we really want. You see, now everyone's trying to get in flow, right? In the zone, they imagine it. How did Michael Jordan imagine the new way to play basketball, the way that he was going to do things, the way he's going to jump and dribble? All, they're all made up. It's made up. Now we go to learn and learn something and we get told this is the way to do it. I'm reading um, Da Vinci's biography right now. He made it up. All these techniques we get taught as painters and everything. Now he made it. He made it up. He looked at things and said, "Oh, you should do shading like this and use your thumb and smudge it." He made it up. You know, we can't even drive a motorcycle or a, or a vehicle now without getting instructions. Someone at the beginning had to make that up. Just really feel that for a second. They made it up. Everything we had was made up. It was imagined. You see, a different way of processing the world. And if you can process from both critical thinking, left brain, and from making it up. If you can get two of them, that's when you find true genius, Steve Jobs, Albert Einstein, right? Real genius being able to go to both places. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for you. How was that? How's that intro going, guys? You ready to do this? Let's go. So, Let's get you into a creative structure. Let's get you into a creative structure first, okay? So I want to work on uh, living your, your true nature and purpose as the creative structure today, okay? It's one of our core four orientations. So we're just going to orientate for true nature and purpose, okay? Then we're going to allow ourselves to notice how our overthinking, overanalyzing aspect of us is causing um, chaos. We're going to do a, a parts integration, uh, sub sub um, part time personality integration, some recodes and super conscious commands, and I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. All right, so let's get ourselves into a creative structure. Okay, so I want you just to grab a pen and paper, or or just type it in. Uh, and, and write down and put a circle around it or type it in or choose it. I choose the end result of living my true nature and purpose. I choose the end. I'm going to write it down here as well. I choose end result of living TNP, true nature and purpose. Okay, cool. When you've got it, 
uh, we're just going to step into that end result and just create ourselves uh, a creative structure. Okay, so I'm ready. I think everyone should be ready. I choose the end result, creating my true nature and purpose. <sighs> Close your eyes and step into it. I choose the end result of living my true nature and purpose and witness what it feels like. And it feels like living my true nature and purpose. Notice what you do, notice who you are. Notice what it feels like. Hmm. Just create that momentum of how it feels, living my true nature and purpose. When you're in your true nature and purpose, just in your heart, feel it in your heart. How do you act towards your end results? How do you orientate every single day? Just experience it. What's life like when you're in this? Keep your eyes closed. Allow the questions to flow into your mind. Breathe it in. That's it. What's it like when you're in your true nature and purpose? How is life like? All right, open your eyes, come back, fill me in. What's it like in your true nature and purpose? How do you act towards your goals and your true nature and purpose? Nice. Good to see all this coming in. Okay. Okay, cool. So we're going to now uh, step into what it's like to be our overthinker. Okay. And I want you to witness how your overthinker orientates uh, to the world, okay? Just experience it, not as something bad. There's many times the overthinker is good and needed, but just, I just want, we just wanna notice the difference, okay? Let's just notice it. So I want you to, to again, uh, write down, uh, I choose to be an overthinker. And I want you just to write that in. Someone type it in. I choose to be an overthinker. And we're going to step into that choice. Okay. It's not going to, it's not going to uh, uh, hurt anyone for you just to choose it and step into it and notice it. All right. Don't worry. You know, you're not going to collapse the wave function of the universe if we just experience it once. We've done it many times before. So just choose it. Okay. So close your eyes. I'll do it with you. I choose to be an overthinker choose it. I choose to think things. I just choose to think and think and think. And just experience how it feels. Notice the good. Notice the bad. Just notice how it feels. What's life like when you're in this reality? Can you witness the difference? Step into it. Become it.
How do you orientate? Keep your eyes closed and stay with it. What's life like? How does it feel? How do you move towards your goals? I choose to be an overthinker, it feels like. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and fill me in. You know, I feel melancholy about it. You know, I feel like parts of me is like, yeah, we get to think about stuff. It's safe. You know, like this is easy. This is good. And then other parts of me feel dead and numb, like I'm not moving forward. And it's like, but there are things, parts of me that's like, yeah, but you know, you've got to work it out. You've got to figure it out. So there's quite a lot of comfort in it for me. But then there's this lack or sense of any sort of um, aliveness. To me, it feels like frozen or numb or just just avoiding. Like it feel, feels like, a, but doesn't necessarily feel that bad. Does that make sense to you guys? It feels just like, oh, yeah, I'm just over here thinking about stuff. It almost feels like a big excuse, right? What are you guys getting? What are you guys getting when you go into it? You know, I get, I just get, I get like a, just a, like a very, it's very grounding. Like I'm not moving anywhere with this. Like it just feels comfortable and you're, it's like an old friend. <laughs> it is, it's like, hey, old, hey, buddy. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> it does, it just feels like, it just feels very st stuck and safe and just, you know, it's almost like winter feeling, you know, like we're just going to get rugged up and cozy and we're going to think about things over here. Some people feels yuck, just thinking, thinking, yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with either of these. Can everyone see there's no problem here? Okay, there's no, there's no nothing we need to solve. It's, it's simply having these be integrated, okay? Because it's uh, it's it's just important that that it, it's it, it's it comes together as one. Does that make sense? It's like there's there's times for that, but not all the time, right? And so we want to bring it together. We want to have it together as one. And so we're going to do uh, we're going to do a little bit of a, an integration process here to bring this together, so that they can be it can be used when needed. Kind of like you know, you guys know I'm, I'm talking about action movies today for some reason, but uh, you know, Batman has his like his his tool belt or, not, or his, his bat belt or something, and he has all these different things. Or Spider Man, they have a belt and they have different tools that they can pull out. You know, it was, I guess, more like a builder and they have a tool belt and they have, it's all there. It's ready to use, but they don't have to always be using it. Right. Someone wrote in like uh, inspector gadget or a utility belt. Right. And, and, and so it's there. And we want this to be something that you can use all the time. But, you know, it's, it's almost like uh, for some of us, um, overthinking is like a hammer. And so everything we see, we just take the hammer, <laughs> you know, like even if it needs a, a screwdriver, we just take the hammer, bang, bang, bang. So we need to have it there so that it's available, but then we can put it away, right? It, it's kind of like that. It's really, uh, really important. Really important to be able to do that. Are you, are you guys with me? And so we want to integrate it. So it's not it's not necessarily running the show. Is there anyone here that, that truly believes that their overthinker should be the, the one running the show? Give me, give me a, give me a yes if you're going. No, I think it should run the show. Most of us are like, no, it shouldn't be running the show. I think most, most of the time, you should just be enjoying the moment, being with it, being in flow, experiencing it. But then, does does anyone think that they shouldn't have any um, place for critical thinking and to do a lot of thinking about stuff? I, I don't think that there's a time that we'd be like, well, I never want it at all, you know. So to me, it feels like we want to integrate this. So that it can it can just be with you. So that you, that if you need it, all right, cool. I really want to think this through. Maybe if you're purchasing a house, or I really want to think this through. You know, business decisions, or you know, a new business partnerships and stuff like that. Like I really want to think this through. That it's there, 
but it's not like, oh, I'm, uh, here's a new relationship. Well, let me bring out my list of 100 items that the new relationship has to meet in order for me to be happy with it. Uh, is he over six foot? Uh, good with kids. <laughs> you know, like, do we turn up with our list or can we just be in the moment? Um, does he make me happier? <laughs> you know, <laughs> rather than well, to think it through because I make a mistake. <laughs> it does um overthinking really can kill emotion kill the kill kill all of the ability just to be in it so it does it comes it comes from fear someone says but it is safe well you know a ship is safest in the harbor as well hey that's where it's safest, but that's not what it's made for, right, Linda? It's not made to, you're not made to just sit in safe, are you? You're made to get out there and go for it, you know? You're made to get out there and go for it. Life's worth living. Life's worth living. <laughs> no, I thought you were joking. Love you. It's worth living, hey? Someone said, my ship just sank in the harbor. Let's get you a new ship. <laughs> I hope that was okay, Linda. I thought it was a funny joke. The Titanic. Oh, guys, we could find a lot of bad ship metaphors. At least they were living their life, you know, rather than just being tied. I think the safest place that anyone could be is you could go into a prison cell, hey? Prison cell. You can, you're pretty safe. Hey? Go, go to maximum security. You ain't going to live a life, though. True? So, you know, it's really about what it is that you're creating. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a process now. Hey, let's do a process about these two. And so we've noticed it and we want to step into our true nature and purpose. And we've already, we're already starting to see and, and uh, experience ourselves in a, in a different way. Okay. In a different way, our true nature and purpose. And so it's, it's important to ask you, well, what is your true nature and purpose? You know what is your true nature and purpose? Like, how are you when you're being in your truth? And if we feel back into that, your truth, your truth is, is very important, you know? Your truth is that you're, you're on the edge of creation. Your truth is you have, you have a, a full expression that you need to express here. Your truth is, is that whenever you've learned something, it's always come after that you got it wrong. In fact, some of the, the best learning you ever did was first getting it wrong. It's how you learn to walk and talk and read and write, isn't it? Your truth is trusting yourself. Your truth is getting it wrong, going for it and getting it right. That's your truth. Your truth is enjoying the moment. Your truth is having it now. That's your truth, right? Is this is this true? Say that's your truth. That's 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 what it is. It's going for it. It's back in yourself, you know. It's got starting that business, starting that relationship, going for it, being who you're supposed to be. That's your truth. That's what you're supposed to be. It's not this other aspect of you. That's no. You better stop. You better think. Think it through. Don't make a mistake. Play it safe. Don't get it wrong. So it feels to me that the overthinker's intention, and just let, give me a number one if this is true for you, the overthinker's really concerned about not getting it wrong. Is it true? So can we just relabel uh, overthinker to I'm scared of getting it wrong? We could, couldn't we? Instead of saying, I'm an overthinker, we could say, I'm scared of getting it wrong. Right? Hmm. 
Mm. Isn't it more truthful to say that, more accurate? So let's think about that. What's so bad about getting it wrong? How much resistance out of 10 do you have for getting things wrong? Out of 10, that's all right if you've got it. How much resistance do you have to getting it wrong? It's out of 10, guys. You can't do 11. 120, it's, it's just a 10. Or just easy. Yeah, like, you know, be, be honest with yourself. So would it be okay if I worked in your super conscious field for you to create more ease in your, in your world if you could get it wrong? Who's up for that? Who would be happy, be more happy to be able to get things wrong and still feel good about themselves? Who would like that? The ability to get things wrong. This is messing with some people's heads. Hmm. Because if you're allowed to get it wrong, then you're allowed to really go for it. Alex, that's nothing, mate. You'll, you'll, you know, just make that loss really small. I once had a business mentor, so I lost, uh, I had a, I had this business, I lost $750,000 and uh, I went and told my business mentor, and he said, Chris, just, just make that be a really small loss with how much you're going to make. And I was like, all right. You know, so just, you know, be okay with getting things wrong. Just make things getting wrong. I was like, all right, I'll make that small then. He's like, yeah, make that just a little thing. Then he proceeded to tell me that, uh, uh, what here? He's had multiple weeks where he's lost over fifteen million, and I rung him. Um, I rung him. I think it was like two thousand and thirteen. I rung him one time. He said, "Hey, guy, he's going great, great, awesome." I said, "Oh, okay, awesome, awesome stuff." He said, "Yeah, having a crap time of business." I said, "Oh, really?" He goes, "Yeah, one of one of my um, one of my employees caused all this damage and blah blah blah." Anyway it's going to, it's going to cost me about $36 million. And I said, then he said, bah, having a great time other than that. And I'm just going to make it a small thing. And I just, I never forget it. He became a billionaire a few years after that, you know, to so just make it small. See, the thing is, is if you want to play a big game, you're going to, you know, you're not going to get it right all the time. And so if you, you either got to choose to never get it wrong and to just be stuck, safe, doing nothing or going for it and living, living life. Hey, who's up for it, by the way? You don't have to. You don't have to be. Who's up for it? Who's up for going and being on the creative edge? Sometimes you're going to get it wrong. You got to be OK with that, because if you get it wrong, right, and someone was mentioning we're. Where is he? If you get it wrong, you know, you don't want to then like make it worse. So what? You got it wrong. You slipped up, lost a couple hundred grand, lost a million bucks, whatever it is. So what? Now let's carry on. Let's go focus. You know, it's done now. It's done now. Can't, we can't, we can't stay focused on it. True. At least you went for it. Where is he? At least you went for it, you know, to be able to, to be able to uh, fall off the cliff, cliff with a couple hundred grand. You're going for it. Good stuff. You know? Good stuff. You got to be going for it. Is it true? You got to be going for it. You got to be okay that at times you get it wrong. You got to go for it and just, just get back up, and make it happen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference to you. You know, doesn't, uh, doesn't make any difference. You know, some days I've had days in the last month where I've made four or $500,000 and it's the exact same as days where I spend all this money on advertising and nothing's happened. You know, and you go, oh, do you know what? Each day I just, I play tennis, walk my dogs, talk to you guys. You're the same. And when you can get into that wizard's gate of it being the same, whereas he hasn't commented back in yet, I'm like waiting for you to comment in, is um, when you get into that wizard's gate or, or the, the stoic worldview, I guess, of, of acquiescing to the moment, that's when all creation can take off. Because it's not, you're not 
you're not making it such a thing. So, oh, you know, so what would the person you're, you're becoming, you know, what was, what would the person you're becoming do right now? How would, uh, how would the $10 million a year version of you, I'm done with it, so small. Yeah, right on, brother. He says, uh, I've done with it. It is so small. I've got my health. I've got you guys. This will take me to new highs. You're right. Like, what would the $100 million version of you do, bro? How would they react to this? See, the the broke version of you would, oh, crap. But the, the person you are wouldn't be like that. So just get into it. You don't know how fast things can turn around. Who agrees with that? See, a lot of time we're so busy holding on to the failure, we don't realize that that was the breakthrough we needed. It was actually breaking off. That was going the wrong way. There's something bigger sitting right here, but we're so busy crying over the thing we lost. I can't believe they left me. But then, you know, the perfect relationship's right here, but I'm so sad about this one. You know, but the perfect one's right here, you know. It's, we're too, but, but then we just spend so long trying to recreate. We, so he's asking for new. I'm asking for a new. I'm asking for new. Something breaks. And then we go, oh, but this broke. It's like, yeah, it needed some space. <laughs> it needed some space. And so... You know, I think I posted about it recently. I said, you know, as you're as you're walking to your, you know, your dream life, some days you're stepping dog shit. <laughs> you know, like and you have to sit there, clean it off. <laughs> you know, it's part of it, hey? It's just part of it. And you, you know, you get to this place and we're working on it today, and we're working on it in this group, you know. We we you get to this place where it's it's just it's just, it's just is, you know, and it's just great. Right, Nikki? It's just, it just is. It's just great. So good. And it's, it's the place you want to be, you know, and, and from that place, you, you, you are it before you see it, you choose it, manifest. Manifest.